Good morning, I'm Gail Myers, and this is Shiloh United Church of Christ in Danville, Pennsylvania, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It's good to see all of you in person, and I also want to welcome those who are joining us on social media or by audio recording. If you're live streaming with us this morning, please give us a hello in the chat button box so we can welcome you. If you appreciate this church and these services, please like us on Facebook or simply forward the recording to your friends and other family members and invite them to check us out. I want to share a few announcements with you before the worship service begins. Our offering plates are in the back of the room for you to leave your financial gifts to Shiloh. If you're worshiping online with us today, you can help support our ministries by donating electronically through our webpage at shilohucc.org. Or you can simply write a check and mail it in. We thank all of you for the many ways you continue to support the church and the work we do here at Shiloh. We have a prayer team who wants to pray for your joys and concerns. If you have something or someone that you would like prayer for, please write it down on the prayer request forms that are located in the pew racks and leave it in the prayer bowl at the back of the room. Those of you who are live streaming with us can write down your requests in the chat feature. And you can also email or phone your request to the church office anytime, and we'll forward them to our prayer team. We have a couple of fun events coming up. Uh, The Strawberry Festival will be next Saturday. Uh, It's from 3.30 to 6.30. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby for food items if you can help out. And also uh, sign up for help needed on Friday afternoon and Saturday. And then our kayak picnic is coming up on August 24th. We will have a new Summer Sunday uh, book study using the book, People Love Dead Jews, Reports from a Haunted Present. Um, I've already bought the book. It looks like a really good study, so we invite you all to join. We are also looking for people to share their musical gifts. Um, If you can do that during our worship services during the summer, um, there's a sign-up sheet for that in our lobby. Our mission of the month is strengthen the church, and your contributions help to build up the United Church of Christ throughout the country and the world. There is much more about these things in your bulletins. We hope you take them home with you and look them over carefully for any ministries and fellowship opportunities that you can participate in. Now let's prepare for worship. During the prelude, we invite you to quiet your mind, open your heart, and breathe deeply of the Spirit of Christ that is with us here.
please read the bold print. From many lands we gather as a people with diverse homelands, backgrounds, and experiences shaping who we are today. Out of many, we are one. Of different ages and abilities, we gather as a people wearing different clothing, filling different roles, speaking many languages, singing different songs. Out of many, we are one. Each carrying within us, oh, each carrying within us many voices, we gather as a people holding happiness alongside hurt, often in the same moment. Inside every one of us, a crowd of ideas, feelings, and questions. Out of many, we are one. In Christ, we come together and find a deeper unity. People of God, come and worship, that out of many, all may be one. Come to worship our God. Sometimes we close windows 
against the fresh air of new ideas, against the noise of other people's worries, against the winds of change. God, we confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different, against the world news or community concerns. Forgive us our insulation in our own homes, our shuttered churches, the security systems on our hearts. Open up our lives. Amen. Forgiveness is the threshold. First we look out, then we are sent out. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading today is a poem written for our United Church of Christ from our United Church of Christ President and General Minister, the Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson. It is titled, titled Rebirth. Listen now for the inspired word. Change comes sweeping like the winds of hurricanes, flooding waters rising high taking with them, them doubt, fear. In the midst of change, my heart races, my pulse a staccato beat, my feet cemented, fear a reckoning not to be forgotten. Nothing to hold on to, I sink into the water. I am carried on the winds. I am lifted, carried on the highs of harsh winds, tumbling into heights unknown. Spiraling into newness, I am reborn, I am new. There is a vision for this time and space. I rested, renewed. I am in this present. I am in this newness, full of spirit. I am free. Our next reading comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 23. In these verses, we hear Jesus praying for his disciples on the night he was betrayed and sentenced to death, including are the words of the UCC motto, that they may all be one. Listen once more for the inspired word. Jesus said that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that is they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, 
and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the inspired word. Thanks be to God. Sharing our joys and concerns is an important way for us to build community as we pray with and for one another. And you'll have an opportunity to do that in a moment. I want to remind you that we are recording our services and posting them on social media. So if you have any, something or to share about someone else, please make sure that you have their permission. And so today we are praying for the Penn Central Conference, which is bringing their annual meeting to a close this morning. They gather with three other uh, Pennsylvania conferences to discuss plans for a proposed merger into a Keystone Conference. Each conference will vote on that in November. And if passed, it will be forwarded on to General Synod for their approval next Actually, it starts in July uh, when that will take place. And we pray for the continuing discernment of the project as it moves forward. And yesterday we had, those there had a, a, a great enlightening experience as with the sharing of the four conferences together. It was an amazing experience and we're going forth in the joy and the spirit of the Lord. Just wanted to share that. But from that, I am asked to share that we, uh, we are part of the five by five uh, offerings of the United Church of Christ. And we have this certificate given to us uh, as we support our church's wider mission, our basic support and our neighbors of need and the one great hour sharing and the Christmas fund, the strength of the church fund and special mission offerings to the, of the United Church of Christ. We support those all, and we have this certificate to put on the board downstairs. And so, uh, also, we are in gratitude to share that a member, our member, Dave, Reverend Dave Zortman, uh, will be given a certificate in gratitude for pastoral service on the anniversary of his ordination in the United Church of Christ and recognizing and celebrating that ministry as an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ. He was in, ordained July 25th, 2004. So he served a long and faithful and is awarded this citation for pastoral service on his 20th anniversary of his ordination. So it is with gratitude that we'll be able to present that to David. Uh, and so uh, we wanted you to know that. And so, um, as we, we press go forward here with the prayers for the day, I would like to, to uh, offer the prayers that we have and that I know of, and if there's some others later that you want to share. But we continue to pray for Kathy Spatola's brother-in-law, Bud. Uh, he had kidney failure and is now back in the ICU. I understand that he is improving. Someone just shared that yesterday. Um, Sue Simpson's friend, Pam. She has uh, a feeding tube now in place, and uh, prayer is needed for her body to accept that nourishment and of the healing that will provide for her. We also want to pray for the pain that she's experiencing that may be alleviated in these days ahead so that she can be more comfortable and find healing for her body. Linda Millard is going to, uh, she's scheduled this week uh, on June the 12th to have bre breast reconstruction surgery, surgery, so we want to uh, hold her in prayer on June the 12th. Uh, also, my niece Kathy Spangler, whom we have been holding in prayer for this last over a year and a half, actually. She is scheduled June 11th this week to uh, have the skull plate uh, placed back in her skull, and so we're really praying for that to, to go forward to help her to help some healing there, and maybe uh, some, some new able to walk and to gain new strength in her body. It's been quite a journey for her, 
and I give thanks for all her caregivers and family that have really been helping her all this time. So Sherry Pelton has asked for new, uh, prayers for her brother-in-law, Joe. Uh, he uh, is back on our prayer list and he's been receiving chemotherapy. Uh, he was scheduled for a stem transplant this June 13th this week, but they have found new concerns with his lung and so we don't know really if that transplant is still on hold, but at this point he's a little bit de dejected there, and so we're going to pray for Joe, Cherry's brother-in-law, or her brother. Yeah, her brother-in-law. So I pray, excuse me. <laughs> so we pray for good outcomes for all these, all these that are looking for their surgeries this week. Uh, personally, I would say that I will... And, encountering cataract surgery on the 12th myself. So uh, I'll just lift, I have to share too, right? Okay, so we do have Joy's, and our Joy's is Darlis Pope is doing well. She's recovering slowly though from her hip replacement surgery, but she has now been moved to an assistant, new assistant living facility in Lehigh Commons in McCungie, PA. And we have that address in the church office, should anyone want that address to share, uh, send a note. And there's even a phone number there. So uh, I wanted to sh share that with you. Do we have other joys and concerns out there? Dave? I have a joy. We, Joe and I celebrated our 65th wedding anniversary this week. <laughs> 65 years of marital bliss. <laughs> I would just like to say a big thank you to the congregation. Uh, two Sundays in a row, I got up and asked for help. And uh, first Sunday to... Uh, help in the cemetery and get that ready for Memorial Day. And uh, we had uh, nine people show up to help. Uh, then when, uh, last Sunday, I asked for help to take cans over to uh, Jeff's. And uh, we had eight people show up. We met here at 930, took 292 pounds of cans over, and was leaving over there to come back by 1030. So thank you to everybody that helped with these two projects. It was a big help. Thank you. Truly the hands of the body of Christ. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other concerns, and let us come now before God with our morning prayer. Holy God, faithful friend, we come before you humbled by the thought that you have chosen us to be your people. All creation praises your name, but you inclined your ear toward us, desiring in the midst of all the activity and noise of this world to hear our prayers and our needs. You bless us with the rising and setting of the sun with the ebb and flow of the seasons to remind us of your faithfulness through all the changes in our lives. You bless us with a family and church and caring relationships so that we may experience a community of holy love and acceptance where we can learn about the experience you present your, and your, your presence. You bless us with your trust granting us the freedom to choose our own way, even when it means we might hurt you or others. Most especially, 
you have blessed us with new life in and through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life in love for us so that we may give our lives to your service and become blessings to one another and the world. We ask that you meet us, each one of us, in this quiet moment. Help us share with you our personal worries and concerns, as well as the desires of our hearts. Then quiet us and allow us to simply rest in your presence. Thank you, God, for receiving us and all our concerns. Receive us once more with love and grace as we gather up all that we are and all that we hope to be in the words of Jesus as he gave these words to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today, our Penn Central Conference is meeting with Penn West, Penn Northeast, and Penn Southeast, that way, for their annual meetings. One of the important items on their respective agendas is a plan to merge these conferences into one statewide conference called the Keystone Conference. The sermon for today that is being presented uh, is from that meeting and was pulled together by the four conference ministers based on notes from the United Church of Christ president and minister whose poem you just heard, uh, Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson. In a way, this allows us here at Shiloh to participate in the wider church at worship. So here is the text of the sermon that is being presented there today. That they may all be one. This single line formed the United Church of Christ and set our mission. In Jesus' prayer to God, near the end of his life, he asks that God grant the disciples unity and those who believed because of them, and to bring them oneness in God as Jesus himself is one with God. We, as the UCC, embrace that prayer and that hope when we formed, and we still do. Our unity in the UCC was never uniformity. Uniformity might have been easier since it would be clear who's in and who is out. Instead, the UCC sought a flexible union, an open union 
in which everyone would come in with their traditions, their worship, their theology, and we would still be one, one in Christ Jesus. With all the gifts that each person brings, we would do the work of discipleship and be the church. Within that flexible and open unity today, we are hungry. Hungry for a deeper spirituality and an experience of the divine presence. Hungry for a hope that seems impossible given today's headlines. Our hunger grows as the world becomes more complex, confusing, and complicated. Many seek the divine presence through their creativity. Now, that may be musical, visual, or artistic, and comes to fruition in worship. The spirit moves through us, and our spirit-led creativity is expressed in our ministries, such as innovative ways to get food to the hungry, provide shelter for, for those in need, and the like. The spirit can show up in our conversations with others unexpectedly, and the spirit may lead us in new and surprising directions that bring renewal and new life, if we are open to it. What would it mean to be faith-led, to focus on being people of the Spirit? What might that look like? Could being faith-led mean to commit to living as one in Christ? Living as one in Christ means we commit to being a united and uniting church as we were in 1957. Is being united and uniting how you see your work in ministry and in the church? Standing as united and uniting means that we must explore what it means to be a diverse denomination. Diversity is inherent in our unity. We are not uniform. Our diversity is beautiful and challenging, inspiring, eye-opening, and a test of our ability to love our neighbor, especially when our neighbor thinks and worships differently than we do. As one body in Christ, where we center our unity, we are called to embrace diversity and lean into our commonalities and our differences. This is even more important as we engage our ecumenical partners in dialogue. We already have deep conversations with ecumenical partners, Lutherans, Baptists, Presbyterians, and more. And perhaps you and your community also worship with these partners. Our conversations must go deeper. We must explore anew where we come together and how we can be in ministry united in the future. Being a united and uniting church also means that we lift, honor, and acknowledge the gifts of all our members, of all who participate in the lives of our churches. With that honor comes the recognition that we need strong lay leaders. We already have strong leaders. We need more. We need more leaders, not only to be the voice 
of the United and Uniting Church in their churches, but to be a voice for the church out in the world. Lay leaders who can lead churches, who can and do preach, teach, plan worships, visit shut-ins, and speak with authority in their communities. Lay leadership means all of us. Every single Christian, no matter their age or ability, has something to offer the world desperately needs. Lay ministry and leadership must be strengthened. And the UCC and your conference commit to that. In 20 years, who will we, the UCC, be? Some wonder, given the trend of church closures, if there will still be a UCC in 20 years. Rest assured, there will be a UCC, but it will continue to change as it has since our beginning. The way forward is sharing as it was in the days of Jesus. Sharing bread, sharing leaders, pastors, and ideas. Sharing a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. Will new faith streams be joining us? Our commitment to united and uniting must be stronger. Are we open to new partnerships and new directions? Do we seek new opportunities to welcome those who may think differently than we do, but who hold Jesus at the center of their lives? If we will continue as a united and uniting church, we must step out and seek out other believers. Our ministry and our commitment to the gospel can grow. Our experience of the divine presence can grow. Our faith can grow. If we are living in the spirit and being guided by the spirit, new and exciting things happen. They break forth. As the poem says, change comes sweeping like the winds of hurricanes, flooding waters rising high, taking with them doubt, fear. Let our doubt and fear be silent. Listen for the spirit, for there is a vision for this time and space. In this newness, what more could we be? Could we become more intergenerational? More reliant on diverse spiritual expressions? Might we even develop a more porous and fluid relationship with God and the Holy Spirit? Friends, the Spirit is alive and at work among us. Where do you see it? We see it in churches coming together, filled with new purpose and direction. We see it in young people, worshiping alongside the elderly, singing together. We are the church together. Not just us in our own buildings, but all Christians, we are the church together. The Spirit calls us to be diligent in our search for unity, not uniformity. Seek others who have Jesus at the center of their lives. The Spirit is inviting us to something new, together. How do we hear that Spirit and share it with one another. 
In this season of change, may we align with the prayer of Jesus, that they may all be one. And may we say alongside the poet, I am in this present. I am in this newness, full of spirit. Amen. Now our benediction is another poem written by the Reverend Dr. Thompson. This one is entitled Lessons. Hear these words as a blessing for you and for us. We come into this world ready. We come knowing. We come with purpose. We are ready. Knowing is of self, knowledge of our power, Awareness of the wisdom traveling with us, instinct aligning our journey. Purpose is present, the peace that we are. We are courageous, we are open. We are a part of the universe. We encounter a world unaccepting. Our opinions great, our certainty wavers. We lose purpose. We hide our gifts. The pain of living like water flowing, changing rock, wears us down, tearing us at the core. We are ready. Our aches and pains a sign of restlessness, calling us back to brilliance. The weariness in our spirits a reminder. Purpose waits. Purpose awaits. Pulling at our center willing us to remember. We came into this world ready. We are enough. We are brilliant. We are ready. Amen. And so may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. We have all witnessed your presence. We have received your grace. We give you honor and glory for moving in this place. Now we go out to share the good news. Now 
we go out to share your love. Now we go out to share the good news. Now we go out to share your love.